Welcome from the desert with Thomas and the all-new Audi e-tron. In this full review, we're going to take a detailed look on the exterior, the interior and the driving experience of the serious production model of this Audi EV. Today also with road driving dynamic and also a range test. So, what's the performance in the different aspects? Please join us in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! Here you can see the LED daytime running like signature. It starts already with LED headlamps, optionally the ones you can see here, the LED matrix lights, and those also have a special high beam function then. Yeah, from the front it looks like the other Audi SUVs, for example, with this big single frame grille. However, you see the grille is a little bit more closed, just little openings here, and I also have an interesting cutaway model, so behind this very front grille there is basically another layer and there you have some active layers. They can open when the cooling is needed and they close again when the cooling is not needed and that improves the wind efficiency. So pretty interesting for sure. And a lot of sensors are of course being used. For example, um, you can also see in the front camera and some more sensors here in the front and the big e-tron badge right there. So you can see with this vehicle, when we see it now in the series production model, they're not going the way, oh, EVs have to be special, they more make it normal looking with some accentuations and I think that's also a right way. What do you think? 4 meters 90 or 16 foot 1 is the total length of the Audi e-tron, so for European taste that's a full-size SUV basically and I think we, from just from a basic shape we'll soon show you another Audi Q8 review. To me it is basically an electric Q8. Those ones here are already quite bigger rims, so in this case 20 inch. There are different styles available. You get styles which look like really electric vehicle alike, more streamlined, and then you get some you know normal old school wheels. You can pick that definitely. You can even go a little bit bigger if you want. There's the e-tron badge right there, also the charging port. We'll soon feature that too. Then there's the design line, dropping line right there. And I'll also show you different colors. This one here, our main color for today, is called Galaxy Blue. And depending on the individual light, it looks a little bit brighter or darker, sometimes even a little bit greenish. My favorite one would be the Antigua Blue, that is a bright Thomas Blue, as we call it here in Autogefühl. But there's also, for example, a so-called Siam Beige. Also different, depending on the light it is in. And also we got a Catalonia Red. So. Those four colors here for you today, there will be more available quite soon. And you see in vehicle colors also some small wing and already forming some stronger shoulders. So it is not exactly an SUV coupe, but comes close to it a little bit. Here crossover wheel arches. If you like, you can also go for the S line and then have it painted in vehicle color. So all those big electric vehicles weigh over two ton and here 700 kilograms of that is the battery. So that's the main weight point. You save weight for the not existing engine. But then again, 
the battery and I also have a cutaway model there for you where you can see how the battery is being placed in the lower part of the vehicle that brings the center of gravity down also gives you a good agile performance promised at least and 50 50 weight distribution front rear there's an motor in the front and an electric motor in the rear so two electric motors overall and so there's no physical connection between front and rear but you still have the all-wheel drive we can also take a look at individual cells right there pretty interesting for sure always to take a look at those cutaway models and now to something very special first of all let me say those virtual mirrors the camera that is placed inside here is not standard it's an option so the base car and everyone can go for that just for normal mirrors. Whew, glad you can. Then there's a camera here just for the round view camera for the infotainment system. But the main camera, of course, for the screen inside is right here. And well, you can also fold it in, by the way, just, just when someone hits it, for example, for safety. But the main question is, since we can drive this car on the road here today, also with public traffic, is it really useful? So far, maybe you have seen fancy Instagram posts about it or so because it's very visual. You can really take good photographs and video of it. It looks cool, but is it also cool and useful to use? We will find out very soon and I can tell you, it will be very surprising. One thing to say in advance, they are also connected with the blind spot monitor. When you look at them and they have some you know, traffic next to you, it also flashes yellow, for example. That's definitely a very helpful thing. But what I'm really looking forward to is how does it perform just when you have very normal situations? Looking at the rear end, wow, what a spectacular landscape here in the desert near Abu Dhabi. So you see the light strip goes all the way across the vehicle. Interesting in the daytime running light also at the sides. There's an e-tron badge right there. And you see that this top part hangs a little bit over, but over, over I think it's not too daring. Rather elegant design here too. And those strange naming stuff, 55 Quattro, 55. Well, why are they doing that? They want to be able that you compare it, for example, to a petrol engine, which is also maybe, or diesel, which also at 55, that you can see, oh, they are in the same horsepower range. But how many horsepowers? That doesn't leave any trace or hint for that. So what do you think here of the design of the all-new Audi e-tron? And by the way, the towing capacity is at 1.8 tons or 4,000 pounds. And that's pretty much reasonable for an electric vehicle. Not so many electric vehicles offer towing capacity anyway overall yet, but they do. So about charging this 95 kilowatt hour battery, you just open the charging port right there and there's the AC charger. If you open the lower one, you also get the DC charger. AC charging is either with 11 kilowatt or with 22 kilowatt if you go for that option or then the DC with 150 kilowatt. And well, you need the according station for that. We have it right here and then we just put it in like this. And in this case, it automatically starts charging and we can also check it at the interior. And where to get S standards, pretty cool. This is the other side, so not the driver's side, the co-driver side. Another AC charger, so the DC charging just possible at the driver's side. This one here is just, you know, most people usually charge at home, maybe then with AC. And this is a good possibility that you don't have to like move to a certain spot at the charging station or so or at home that you can have the access from both sides pretty good idea
car key, the e-tron does not get a very specific key, but just a special badge it has on the key. You can also get a soft close. This one does not have it, so when we don't have a soft close, then we can test the door closing sound. And that sounds very solid. So let's open it and we have a beige, a bright interior style here, which is pretty cool color-wise, a nice bright Alcantara at the inside of the doors. This one then is a um, soft leatherette cover. The top part here of the door is also from soft material, door handles, and if you have those mirrors for the side mirrors, the like the camera side mirrors we've been talking about, they have, for example, I can already see it, um, I can already show you right there. You can also adjust them a little bit. Um, yeah, so you can <laughs> change the view a little bit right here. Hello, hey guys. And then you can also change the other side of the mirrors. Now the rest of the interior, you can see it is basically an electric Q8 also interior wise. Really modern and stylish, but a lot, lot of black piano use for sure. This one here for as for the decor elements, you can see this is um, a structure. So it's a rather rough structure, but it feels good and high class too. If we focus at the seats, there are three different seat forms. There's a base seat. There's a sport seat with more side accentuation and this one is the so-called multi-contour seat, the most comfortable one. The seat form is really great. However, here they lack sustainability because they only offer animal skin surfaces. Well, at least there's no seat without it. So you can get in the sport seat an Alcantara on the inside, but there are still animal skin surfaces somewhere else and on the outside and stuff. And there's also a seat available with some fabric parts, but still also leather in it. And then this one here, the full animal skin equipment. In their new e-tron GT, the sports car concept, they showed an animal free interior. That's where the future is. But we clearly see that Audi is not in the future yet and not in the present, but rather in the past as for this aspect. Then let's take the seating position. Again, the seat form is super comfortable, so they have taken a giant leap forward for that. So at the moment, those Audi seats are the most comfortable or among the most comfortable in the business. That's really cool. Height-wise, it's also not a problem. I'm one meters 86 or six foot one. Still leaves a lot of headroom. This one here without a panoramic roof, so that, of course, always gives you more headroom. In this case, the electric steering wheel control can control in height and in reach but of course almost everything you see here is still an extra so we can easily go up with the prices then the electric seat control we also have a seat massage function when you press this small button and then you can change different massage functions in the central infotainment system and this is also pretty cool again it's an option of course but that's a pretty cool option. So if you want some more comfort on long-term rides, long-term rides with an electric car, well, mid-term rides <laughs> with an electric vehicle, then you should probably go for the massage function. So yeah, I mean, you sit very comfortable here and it's definitely, it's really good that I, at the moment also have the Audi Q8 so I can really compare it and say, yeah, also seating wise, interior wise, it's an electric Audi Q8. And I think the overall impression is really good. The material build quality is really superb. And it's a really good, comfortable position. I can just, you know, sit here and relax and enjoy the massage. Interior overview. First of all, the screens. 12.3 digital instruments, 10.1 top screen, 8.6 lower screen with a climate unit. Soon more details to each individual screen. We have this structured surface here again. On the top, e-tron batch logo and a leather red cover right there. And this one is also soft touch. Um, hmm. We can <laughs> play around with it a little bit. And the head-up display unit in the very front right there. This one overlaps just a little bit. An interesting part is definitely also this lower part with this special shifting lever. You put it back to put a gear in and park at the side. This one is completely new. And then you have this flying middle console, which is a little bit strange because, um, yeah, you can... I mean, it shall be a very new design element. But I think, um, I'm not sure if it's really useful, you know. I think a design also has to be useful. 
And then inside you can also find some uh, more space to put things or maybe also the key in another 12 volt power supply. There's also two USB slots right there and you can also fold out cup holders then. Last but not least, there's this middle armrest where you can, for example, store a microfiber tissue to have all those uh, services clean all the time. Oh, that's cool, right? Turquoise motors. Mm, nice. And look at that, the inductive charging port for your smartphone is a little bit hidden. It's just the very left side of the middle console and you have to squeeze your smartphone in a little bit, then it's hold tight and against this inductive charging area. And just to show you, if you do not have the electric steering control here for the adjustment, then it looks like this and then it's a manual adjustment. You release it right here, then you can still do it in all ways. It's also an easy system. With the digital instruments, you're pretty flexible. You have this um, view change, for example, if you want the map smaller or bigger. Of course, you can read the GPS very well, but you can also scroll through radio functions, assistance systems, and so on. Head-up display, you can take a look at the current speed, allowed speed, and also some driving assistant information, and also GPS route when it's running. In this digital mirror, again, when we really sit here and the door is closed, then we can also see this is here the side of the vehicle then. Um, you cannot make it closer to the vehicle. You can just make it more far away from the vehicle. And then again, hit the reset button, which is again, put a little bit too low, I think. And then if we switch here, we can see <laughs> there's some, some work in there. Um, of course, there's nothing happening here now because we are actually controlling the other side. So here we go. Now I'm using the touch pad or this touch screen on the other side and the passenger side is being controlled. Oh, there's my backpack right <laughs> behind the car. Uh, but then again, take a look at where this thing is actually placed. I think it's also too low and too much at the side of the doors. Again, I'm really not a fan of this system. Are you? So let's take a look at those screens. Again, the GPS is really fast. Pretty cool. Looks, of course, nice with this satellite view. It's all with touch. And then the first thing I always do with those set, um, with those displays with Audi, I go here to the MMI settings and then deactivate this touchscreen feedback because I always have to press like really hard. And the thing is here, when it's activated, do it like this, like on the smartphone, nothing is happening. It's maybe like they're thinking uh, people want to have real buttons on the touchscreen. Is that the thought? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure. If you deactivate it, then you can click like you're used to at the, um, at the smartphone. You still get this clicking feedback. If you like, you can also deactivate it. But here it's also then easy to control and you can just click on stuff. That's, I think, how it's supposed to be, actually. There are also some special charging um, modes here and um, you know, visualization, for example, for the e-tron that is special then for the e-tron. The rest is basically the same as we know from A6, A7, A8, Q8, and so on. And also the, the small Audis, phone connect via Bluetooth, or also via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That's also possible. It would appear right here then, here in the phone apps. Then in the lower part, you get the climate control like this or you can hold your finger and browse up and down or use the voice control. Set temperature to 22 degrees. I'll lower the temperature to 22 degrees. Oh, we got the male voice today. Interesting. So that's also possible for that. And what's also interesting that when you are, you know, when when you put in a new route for example, then the lower part switches either, you know, that you can type in something, some letters, or you can also write, that's possible, or then again use the voice control, which is also um, working quite nice. Usually, let's test it. Take me to Dubai. Please wait a moment while I search for the destinations. Could you say the line number, please? So, well, that's not exactly Dubai now, but um, I could choose a line number now. Let's try it again. Uh, 
yeah let's cancel again and just go once more navigate to dubai city center i'm afraid it's not possible to enter a street in this town using spoken commands please use the mmi touch screen hmm okay about that but you know at least in germany this uh, voice command usually worked very well maybe it's a problem here with the region i don't know so let's get in the rear the rear door does not open too wide the top part here is it's a little bit harder than in the front but not entirely hard so still okay for me you, you see you have to come around a little bit that you can really see me as for the door but still is enough space of course and headroom wise it's also no problem here in the back again i'm one meters 86 or six foot one knee room is also fine so i mean it's not a short car so the package is not the best it should have even a little bit more legroom considering the length but you can see with four adults absolutely no problem and also the seating position here in the rear as you see it rather upright in this suv is really good so it's super comfortable here i also fix at the outside of the seats you can flip the seats already from here we'll also do that from the trunk of course and then if we go to this middle part we have some cup holders right there and some more room here we go you can also just use the middle part as a ski hatch that's possible and then there's this thing about electric vehicles so you don't need a physical connection from front to rear axle if you want the all-wheel drive so you have engines or well, motors electric motors at both axles so that's then the advantage that you can keep the middle tunnel here flat you don't need a big middle tunnel because you know you don't need you know something transverse going right there so indeed it is rather flat here so you can better put your feet here for example but then they put this whole middle unit here it's actually quite large so my feet do not fit right there so i have to put my feet next to it anyway in the lower part there are two more usb supplies and 12 foot power supply and then this whole climate unit here i think if they could could have made me a little bit less voluminous it would be better here to sit also as a third passenger however yes most people drive maybe with maximum four people in the cars but i think if you have an electric vehicle it would be better to have a more open space here like tesla does for example in the model x or in the model uh, s so um, that's better than there of course however audi has the higher build quality because they have so much so much experience with that so there's definitely a pro and contra sitting here in the middle seat I mean it's of course a little bit harder here as for the surface it still works with the headroom yes and it is better than in a non-electric vehicle because of the lower middle tunnel but again i wouldn't recommend it also for longer trips so first let's open the trunk you have to unleash it from the inside where you usually unleash the you know the engine hood bay but here you can see there's a cover first you can see some of the electric parts here already wiper fluid is right here so and then you put this one here up and have some 60 liters in the front for example to stow all of the equipment here for the cables different cables for you know household plug um, ac charging and so on so that you have your real trunk then clean in the rear the trunk either open it here press the key or use the foot kick opening mechanism if you have ordered that option the loading sill here is relatively high you have to say then there are no rails here at the side so it's wobbling a little bit but overall still a quite good quality there's a net if you want to store something hold something tight there's some room below that here but there's extra equipment put in here you can also fit it with a replacement tire you can see there's also a special cable for a recuperation app so that's not a stock so to say 12 volt power supply so this setup here is 600 liters that's of course very limited especially in height i will soon also take the measurements and the maximum figure is 1725 liters so if we flip the seats from here that's quite practical and then you can also load things through and just to put a backpack here inside you can see the size and then if you if i put a backpack in the in the back the backpack in the back of the back trunk 
then see it doesn't really fit. So that's you know because it's falling down here. As for the roof a little bit, if you put it here, then it also still works with the cover. But even that, you can see that one is still working, but I can't pull it much more in the back because again the height is limited. Still, the trunk overall is actually quite well usable. So from the back of the trunk until the back of the back seats, it's just over one meter in length. And here I put the head restraints up now on the right side and there the head restraint is still in. There you can see the height difference. So you can get the seats a little bit flatter if you like. And again, two third, one third split or also the single split here just in the middle. And the width here is just also over one meter so that's very well usable and the height well at the very rear this is just 35 centimeters and then at the rails right here this is then yeah about 57 centimeters so here we are road driving with the all-new audi e-tron and we'll start with an acceleration this electric acceleration 6.6 .6 seconds is the acceleration figure, 0 to 100 kilometers or 62 miles an hour with 360 horsepower output or in the boost mode 407 horsepower output and 5.7 seconds is the acceleration. Let's see if we can get that, bo that boost mode activated. We'll put it in dynamic mode and yeah, we'll also preload it just a little bit. Let's see how that acceleration goes. Preload 50% and... Wow, that's already 1 out of 30 it was. <laughs> that was super quick. And due to this all-wheel drive, so one motor each axle also a very let's say flawless feeling pretty interesting what do you think did you check the time code how fast did we really go and now to our first real driving part on the road and also in public traffic and let me start to tell you something about the recuperation modes because that's really essential for driving. So there's two ways. I can set the recuperation to automatic, then the car is predominantly just rolling. And when I hit the brakes, we can also see it here on our special prepared iPad where we can see if the car is using the brakes, that would be in red. So, or when it's green or in turquoise those two are recuperation so turquoise is just basically the rolling recuperation green would be a little stronger recuperation orange is when I accelerate so use the power so you can see here when I lift my foot off the throttle turns with turquoise and it's just a rolling recuperation and we will see the green recuperation later and when I would be braking really hard, then it's also red. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's hard to hold the camera, the third camera, then of course. So, and the thing is, when I'm in this automatic mode, then the car is predominantly set on rolling. That's not a one-pedal feeling. So, however, when I use the shifting pedal, I can set two recuperation modes, and then the car is recuperating harder when I go off the throttle. But as soon, it's like this. So recuperating, for example, on the second mode, but as soon as I go on the throttle, this is basically deleted by the car. And the car only goes into this recuperation mode, for example, when there is maybe like an intersection coming or something like that. However, if I now, on the infotainment system, pick manual, then it's more like, you know, from, from Tesla, for example, like this one pedal feeling because then the car is remembering what I said on a manual basis. I can have it with the just rolling here. Nothing happening, car's just rolling, which would be more efficient if I want to 
roll the longest way, of course. So rolling is always more efficient than recuperating, unless you want to reduce the speed anyway. You know, and that's quite often the case. And there you can set the first recuperation mode, and then also when I hit the throttle again, it stays in this mode and goes back to the reducing the speed as soon as I go off the throttle. And also in the second recuperation mode, and that one would be coming closer than to this one pedal feeling or driving. So I think this automatic mode they did for customers who are used to driving normal petrol engine cars maybe. Um, however, if you think about if you go off the throttle there, then you also don't have a rolling, you know, um, you also have some engine brake. Unless you have a modern automatic system which also uses um, these rolling or coasting effects or something. <clears throat> and this um, manual mode is rather than when you have, you know, <clears throat> sorry, uh, when you want to use this one pedal feeling. So you hardly use the brakes ever. And Audi promises that in 90% of the cases the car would be using the recuperation any energy or regenerative braking anyway and you don't need the real brakes. So that's for the theory and already some views here on our iPad. You can see here when I go off the throttle then recuperation again is being used. But what about the agile driving? Well, so we're going up the hill now and then we're going down the hill and have the really heavy recuperation. Let's see how that one plays out. So first, I go I'm already here in the dynamic mode. Then I also have the boost function available, which we used in this 0 to 100 or 62 miles an hour acceleration. Otherwise, the boost function in the normal driving modes, it's not available then. In the roundabout, you see this car always has a great handling indeed. It feels a little bit smaller than you would actually expect. And that is due to this all-wheel drive system, the electric all-wheel drive, where you can distribute the torque basically where you want it. So really depending on the situation where the torque goes to which wheel. So at the moment I'm setting the standard recuperation mode, the manual one, sorry, the manual, manual recuperation mode because um, to me, this is somehow more natural to an electric vehicle, you know. If I drive an electric vehicle, I somehow expect this one pedal driving feeling and I don't use the brakes unless, you know, there's an emergency situation and I really need to use the brakes. But now, of course, we can see that very well in this map perspective. There are very nice winding roads here ahead on Rebel Rafet Street. Also very interesting landscape and there you can see that the steering is really precise of this vehicle so there's no real dead zone of the steering wheel. Also you don't have to put much power in it but the interesting thing they really achieved here usually when you know have a very sporty one, you sometimes have an arcade feeling, but here it is not hard to control, but at the same time it gives you a very natural driving feeling. And usually it's not so much fun to go around those bends in big SUVs, and <laughs> it isn't big SUV, but still it's a lot of fun and it's really agile to drive. The torque is somehow rear wheel biased, that also helps with this sporty experience for sure. So it's also what we experienced with our desert ride in Namibia already, that the car really feels very, very sporty. Now, when I go off the throttle, I think it's a really natural feeling somehow, because when I go off the throttle, I really want to reduce speed a little bit. And when I have this recuperation mode on manual, it stays that way. So I somehow don't want the car to decide then when to do what. I want to be in control of, of my recuperation. But you can surely also argue for another solution that you have sometimes the rolling and then when, for example, the ACC is realizing something, then it's recuperating there. I think it's 
It's really what you're used to and what you want, and you can surely argue for both. Also, just listen how silent it is, so we don't have any engine sound, maybe just like this little EV sound we are hearing, and together with the great noise insulation, it gives me a very calm and silent driving feeling, although it's sporty, and that's definitely fun, and I'm not necessarily missing any engine sound here. It would be maybe a little bit more entertaining to have a V8 sound or something on camera, definitely, but you can still enjoy some sporty driving and somehow you can also better enjoy the landscape then. And <laughs> of course, if there are some uh, luggage stuff in the rear flying around, then you can also hear that <laughs> on camera probably. <laughs> wow, what a great twisty winding road here. So this very flexible electric all-wheel drive also gives you the possibility to um, do some torque steering, so for example put more torque to the outer wheel than in the corner and to the inner wheel a little bit less torque and that pushes the car also in the corner. That's again something that helps with the agility of the car. However, if I want to react a little bit faster as for the car be cars behind me, I always have to look down into those side mirrors whereas the electric support for the blind spot warner that is very well um, integrated shown you that earlier but other than that so far my experience while driving is that it's um, more distracting and you lose some time because when i look to the side mirror the normal one um, i'm in an area where at the same time i see what is going on in the front of me, but when I look to the screen, I have a second or two where I don't see anything which what is going in or going on in front of me. And depending on the speed you're driving, it can be really a couple of seconds where you're basically driving blindfolded. So really great road to drive here, and we're going up about 1,000 meters higher. And this should also deplete the battery just a bit. Later on in this review we also do um, like just flat driving range tests, see how that one plays out as for the very realistic range. And after we've depleted the battery here, we'll go downhill again for the recuperation test and see how much energy can this car actually re uh, regenerate when we're going downhill because it claims to have one of the best regenerative braking system on the market. We'll see how that one plays out very soon. First of all, some more agile driving experience here. Maybe I also heard it from the outer, it's like little EV sound. And you might have heard that um, uh, starting from, from 290, beginning of 290, um, I think at, at least somewhat in the year there are different, um, you know, different embargoes running for that when it has to be implemented finally. So all the new EVs, you can just remember that, they have to have a special sound that says, hello, I'm an electric vehicle, I'm coming. And that does have some sense for sure, because um, you, know, if, if you, you know, if you cannot see, for example, then you need to hear an electric vehicle and they are just so silent that in public traffic, you need to have a chance to hear it. That. That's, I think, a very important aspect for sure, even though I mean, it would be cool if they are silent, but then again, also people need to hear that they're coming, so you can, you can understand both perspectives for sure. So we're going higher and higher and higher, and some more agile corners. Even when I accelerate in the corner, the car stays true to the road. I also don't have too much body roll as for the air suspension. It is rather set on a stiffer tone the air suspension so um, sporty setup for that oh there's another e-tron coming how did that one get up here so fast <laughs> they're already recuperating down there again in the way so i can just stress what i found um, with prototype driving this car it's really sporty it feels smaller than that it actually is due to this active and flexible all-wheel drive the low center of gravity, the precise steering, and at the same time, 
the great noise insulation. So it's such a great car to drive. And you know, in our reviews, we always uh, give you pros and cons and uh, also film action here. <laughs> And definitely the biggest pro of this car is that among all the electric vehicles, the big and the small ones, it's one of the best ones to drive and one of the most fun and agile to drive. Next, maybe just to the BMW um, i3, which is a way smaller car, of course, and therefore uh, way more agile. But again, this concept they're using here really hides a little bit the size of the vehicle and the Audi Q8 I've been driving recently also with the ICE is also a lot of fun. They can surely be compared. They just have a different drivetrain. And now the regenerative braking test. So here it's basically, you no, know, it doesn't matter if I'm going to automatic or manual because either I step on the brake now the whole time now you can see the green is the braking wrap corporation on the iPad app um, and the turquoise again would just be the coasting here when I'm just going off the throttle coasting <coughs> recuperation and green is the braking recuperation but what I'm doing now so I don't have to step on the brake all the time I'm saying the second recuperation mode and well no matter if I'm in automatic or manual now it will stay that way if I'm in the automatic recuperation mode if I would go on the gas just once then it would basically, you know, go back again. In manual, it would stay again when uh, when I lift the throttle. So that's the, the basic difference. But here, for example, um, you see that the recuperation is actually quite active. So even though we are going down the hill, I am not gaining any speed. And we are at a range of 233 kilometers at the moment. And at the same time, I'm also counting the kilometers we are going down. And actually, well, we are too slow even, so <laughs> I have to accelerate a little bit. Let's see how, how many kilometers we are going and how much range we are gaining back. That's the key thing now. So now the iPad is turning orange once more. So we, when I'm accelerating, here is also going straight. I'm lift the throttle coasting again you could argue for the automatic mode for example when you're on the motorway that on the motorway coasting is more suitable somehow and then you use the brake and again if you want always the one pedal feeling without having to change it again then this manual recuperation mode would be way to go of course you could also somewhat coast with the manual mode you just don't go off the throttle then but stay a little bit on the throttle that's how you do it for example in Tesla so now we're going down here just steadily and I went to the manual mode now and went in the second recuperation mode that we can have the maximum recuperation if we want it and at the moment it's the coasting recuperation still but the most interesting thing you'll probably find now is no matter what I do or how I reduce the speed we will not get into this red area on the iPad which would be the disc brakes and so you can see that the disc brake, the normal brakes of the car will probably not be needed. So now we can reduce speed, I just lift the throttle. This one is still the coasting recuperation. So the, and even now the car is reducing speed just a little bit. So even though more than two tons are rolling down the hill, we are not really increasing the speed. Now in the corner I can apply some more brakes. See it still. Ah, there it is. There was a short moment where I was using the real brakes because there was a little bit more braking power needed then. But that's it basically. And so so far it looks quite good. We already gained two kilometers of range and we went two kilometers down the hill. So it really seems that when you're going down a steep hill that this car can gain back one kilometer of range when you're going one kilometer down the hill and would be the same in miles, of course, or accordingly. That's really interesting. And we don't have to 
be in the full charging zone for that all the time even though I'm you know we're in the half charging zone so to say at the moment when I'm maintaining that speed maybe I can also go when I use the the right pedal here I can switch between recuperation mode 2 or mode 1 so here maybe the at the moment the mode 1 is okay so now I'm staying in the mode 1 and not doing on anything on the brakes not doing anything on the throttle and for example when I'm next to the approaching corner I can go to the recuperation mode 2 and we are gaining a little bit more back or maybe one again <laughs> so you can uh, also just control the car with the pedals here almost feels like um, you would, would be using a hand what are they doing there <laughs> pick up with a loose pipe rolling over the street hmm. interesting to see now again a little bit more speed using the right pedal mode one that's really funny that you just control the speed here with the shift pedals I mean why not that's awesome experience now a little bit more recuperation again mode two out of the corner a little bit faster out mode one <laughs> or maybe mode zero now rolling even a little bit faster that's really interesting I think it's the first time I controlled the speed really with the pedals mode two for a little bit faster oh now we're going faster in the corner now also those um, you know, transverse powers are also breaking us of course the tire friction not hitting the brakes not hitting the brakes now we're getting slower of course because we're in the corner and now we're at 249 kilometers and we went down four kilometers so that was not that much to, ah, now 250 so our range is increasing and increasing and that's of course now something where there's a big advantage if you compare it to an uh, in combustion engine car there the energy is just lost and here you know we have the problem with the range because if you think about now the you know the according Audi Q8 if I have the three liter diesel there and fuel it up I can you know approximately drive a thousand kilometers you know it would be like 600 miles before refueling and here it's just you know a little bit over 300 kilometers or like 180 miles so that's a big difference so not such a big difference if you compare it to the petrol engine of course but then again whew, you really have to think about if that makes sense but however if you have for example a topography where you go uphill and downhill quite a lot then it can still make sense now going down faster again now we're using the secondary recuperation mode and even there steadily going slower 255 five kilometers so now it's not exactly one kilometer per one kilometer down but I think it will increase now when we're going downhill 256 so you see you see that that goes quite fast the steeper it is of course so I think we could prove here already that the recuperation system is indeed pretty efficient here in this car and we see how it is at the at the um, you know at the, at the real downhill of the vehicle what was it what have we been starting with with 230 37 or something I think I have to scroll back in the video and, uh, and see myself so um, that was even I think I think an even better result you know seemed like so now we um, when it was a little bit steeper we, we made up some energy so now we went down six kilometers and we are at a range of 200 almost 260 kilometers now so that was even even more so because that was not a kilometer we, we've been driving here I think we were starting at 237 so when it was really steep here we are almost gaining like two kilometers 
of range per going one kilometer down. And it's pretty impressive. So we also have some off-road riding for you here today. Just a little bit soft off-roading with the Audi e-tron. Those are here again the prototype vehicles because, well, they probably thought, you know, they can get wasted now on the off-road. Let's <laughs> let's put them on rough terrain. And the other ones, the serious production models, the shiny ones, let's keep them on the road. So the air suspension can race a little bit. So there's a little um, difference then. Um, the total difference is instructor. The total limit is 7.6 centimeters, so it goes five centimeters up on demand here on the off-road mode, and 2.6 centimeters down. So when you go 2.6 centimeters down, then when you're going faster, for example, it's also nice to see in the front now. 2.6 centimeters down when you're going faster, the car it has less wind resistance, is better for handling. And here again, put it all the way up the 5 centimeters, that's then the overall difference 7.6. Oh, this car is already squeaking a little bit, probably had some, uh, some more off road maneuvers already. And we've been to Namibia also on this uh, desert lake. You should tune into that episode later on as well because that was some fast off-road driving with drifting and so on, because it's also majorly about the all-new all-wheel drive, the electric all-wheel drive they put in here. And well, it's another Quattro system because Quattro is just their brand name for their all-wheel drive systems. And the thing is that here you have no physical connection from front to rear axle. So both electric motors work on their own basically, but adjust the, uh, the speed. You have a rear wheel bias, so that makes the car drive a little bit sportier then. And also you, well, you don't need like a differential lock or something because you can also distribute the power between those individual wheels. And that also works against understeering. And when you also put the ESC off, then you can really do some nice drifting actions. Again, check out this action episode we've done in Namibia. That was really, really cool. Here today, some slower off-road riding. Um, seen also, you know, some, some angle change here, for example, and just to get another a feeling for that vehicle here. So it's also easy to control off-road. The steering is light, but still offers you a feeling of, you know, you actually always know what you're in, what to do. The air suspension, remember that when you put an air suspension higher, you lose comfort because you have less negative travel then. That's a very interesting as aspect, but still, you feel that you're driving an off-road vehicle with an air suspension. Because all of the bumps here, they are evened out quite well still. However, it does not have a very, very soft off-road setup as well as suspension, because they primarily also want to tune for, this, for the city and motorway driving that you can drive a little bit sportier still. So that's the main focus for sure of the vehicle. And what we've also experienced already in, in Namibia, when you're driving here through the landscape, um, this is a designated track here. Um, you are also silent for everyone that is outside. So um, that makes you, for example, when you think about using it as a safari vehicle or something, then you can approach um, also, you know, also maybe, you know, animals in the park or something you can approach it a little bit better and you don't annoy them with loud engine sound or, or something like that that's I think also a very very interesting aspect for sure so you know go a little bit faster we're in this off-road mode once again and the car just gives me a very good feeling and I think this electric all-wheel drive aspect is really could be something for the future also for even, even for hard off-road driving, because you got instant torque when you need it and you can really finely tune it where you want to have it. So you don't need an off-road gear reduction, for example. All those special off-road features are rather done because of the, you know, of the technological stuff that you had initially, you know, with internal combustion engine and different gears, transmission and so on and so on and here you actually don't need it. So with the electric one, you can just control it in a very different way. 
I think that's definitely a very interesting aspect. The overall ground clearance is about 17 centimeters. Um, again, you can lift it up a little bit higher than, but this car does not have the premium ground clearance. So um, it's not for hard off-road use and for some really like steep inclines and so on. You see here, even here, I have to go rather slow. I don't um, scratch the ground and stuff. Hill descent control, even in this short part, was already activated. The car is doing that by itself automatically. Quite a rocky surface, but still, you know, it's also pretty silent, you know. So, um, usually when you're driving off with like, also like with those older diesel cars or something, it's over like, but here, I think, especially when you're going to some nice nature roads or something, or also normal roads with good landscape, if you have the silent electric vehicle, you can enjoy it even more. Because, you know, when you're driving on the racetrack, I think that's maybe a part where you think, okay, the, the, the sound is really missing. But here, I think no one would say that sound or something would be missing in this case. Or what do you think? So, very interesting always to drive a little bit off-road here with the e-tron. And again, I really recommend you, if you want some more high-speed off-road driving, to tune in to the, our other episode there. I will also link it in the video description and you can enjoy more of that. And now we want to drive rather calm and also maybe a little bit just straight to see what about that realistic range. So at the moment, this car here is filled up with energy about 98%, it's said. And the predicted range is always calculated, you know, among the last driving situations and so on. And this here at the moment is 360 kilometers prediction, which would be not so much actually. Let's see how that one plays out, definitely. And also let's take a look at the energy consumption because then we can also calculate. Um, oh, by the way, if you hear this like rubber sound, it's because the, um, you know, the sole of my shoes meets this super, super fresh rubber pad of the pedals. It's obviously so fresh that it still gives an <laughs> sound. <laughs> also very interesting, I mean. What can you find on details on, on those vehicles? Even when going straight, you always got a very connected feeling to the car. The car still feels light somehow, and of course also super silent. So at the moment, going here at about 60 kilometers an hour, and it's really super silent and super relaxing. So this already great sound insulation is meeting the electric drive, the silent electric drive of this vehicle, and that's a great match. So this works very well together. And since I've also recently driven the Audi Q8, I can really compare it. And this is indeed a better driving feeling because it is a lot of fun to enjoy this silence. That's, that's really pretty cool. So the most confusing thing again with the mirrors is you have to look more down. And it, um, I think the thing is with the mirrors, I mean, if you look at this mirror, if you look at that side mirror and then that side mirror, the normal ones, it somehow gives you an overall feeling, a three-dimensional feeling of your surrounding. But since those are here, flat screens, they don't deliver you that. So that's, I think, also another problem. And also when, when you control them, you know, while driving, that's way more distracting to control those while driving than you would do it with the electric mirror control right there, because then you also look a little bit more upright, more like here, and here you look here. That's again another problem. So I just have to, I, I, can, I can just mention that again. Uh, I think this is the biggest technology, one of the biggest technology fails I've recently seen in a vehicle. I mean, 
I'm really sorry for, for the engineers that took uh, out to this technology because there's you know a lot of know-how behind it and they surely put a lot of thought um, in it but it just clearly doesn't work so if you order this vehicle order it without this option and <laughs> I mean have some good food for the for the for the money you you saved there because it's a couple of thousand euros extra in price. It's really not worth the effort. Um, just maybe to to show off to your friends. Hey, I got this new technology feature or something. It looks cool. It's a great wow effect. But effectively, while using it while driving, it's an absolute technology fail. I can just you know have you know I'm always honest with you guys. So now going on the motorway and rather some straight. I mean, I've been doing some cruising driving here anyway, but we also want to keep it um, realistic that we don't have to you know, just like <laughs> 60 kilometers an hour and cruise control. So we also had some, you know, stopping and then with recuperation test and something should still be realistic. And after this playing around, we have a consumption of 24 kilowatt hours on one kilometers so that's in this case right it's really hard to to put it out to 100 miles but I know that would be like 24 kilowatt hours per 60 miles <laughs> um, interesting is that is somewhat comparable to uh, the one of uh, Tesla Model S or to the Tesla Model X to other big electric vehicles which are at the same weight approximately the weight of course is predominantly controlled by the battery they put in here um, whereas the small electric vehicles you know that AJ and Michelle have recently been filming the uh, you know the Hyundai and, and Kia smaller models and um, in this case they started with the Kia E Niro, sorry, it's a E Niro, right? So er, since Robert De Niro took on testimonially being for this car, everyone says, "Oh, it's called Niro." So everyone calls it Niro now, and they are also calling it Niro. So let's call it Kia E Niro. That one had a consumption of about 15 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. So yes, smaller electric vehicles are more sustainable because it's like with the car, with the combustion engine cars they use less electricity because they also need to move less weight and so on. So we'll watch the consumption here um, of course for you. Like this situation now. I was looking at the, at the mirror at the camera again and I thought okay so I did do the mirror view right so I can change. I didn't even look at the screen. That's, I mean yeah you can say okay, okay it's my fault but it's something uh, you're so used to while driving a car it's really hard to get that out of your veins you know it's it's in our blood that we look at the mirror hmm. yeah so we control our speed here because uh, the fines here in Abu Dhabi are actually pretty high so we, at the moment now at 120 kilometers an hour so That's actually a good motorway speed, you know, so that's like a 70 miles an hour. It's again super silent. What a great ride as for that. You can really relax. I don't have to raise my voice in any way. Then the air suspension, which is set on a rather sporty note, is giving me still a good feedback. It's not too soft, but also not too hard. It's definitely not one of those flying carpet ride air suspensions where it's really soft. I always say when I want an air suspension, I want it rather soft because that's the reason I go for an air suspension. Mm. But here I think it's still a good compromise. It's the same with the Audi Q8. We've experienced a really good to ride, to ride and still a sporty experience whatsoever. Now at 140 kilometers now, which is loud here. It's one of the very rare countries outside of Germany where you can drive more than 100 or maybe more than 120 on motorways here, so at 140. And still, super silent, the car is very well to control. 
it's super stable and the precise steering feeling here also at the higher speeds so even the smallest commands see here have an effect on what's happening on the road so it is still light to control but super precise and it's just good to know that something is happening and it doesn't have a real dead zone or something and now also something very interesting is happening as soon as I went up now just those 20 kilometers consumption went up too and that's of course happening with ICE cars anyway now at 28 kilowatt hours per one kilometers so of course there's more wind resistance now and the car basically has to fight against this the AC is running but it's not too hot outside here yet outside 23.5 degrees Celsius so that's something in the you know like beginning of the 80s Fahrenheit region I think that should be um, so let's say we, we drive like this now all the time let's see what the vehicle says it says 315 kilometers of range left I mean we've driven um, a little bit now let's reduce the speed again to 120 and see how that one plays out then that should drop the consumption once more so now at 27.4 so a little bit definitely and the overall is again yeah it's 27 overall at the moment for um, you know the trip so far and if we then calculate it if it's a 95 kilowatt hour battery and it's about 27 kilowatt hour consumption on 100 kilometers that's of course not 400 because I mean an easy calculation would be like say 25 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and 100 kilowatt hours battery like with Tesla that's 400 kilometers of range and with the Teslas we indeed had like 400 sometimes toward like 420 430 something like that Audi claimed at one point that they can do even do better than Tesla and obviously they can't so yeah I think 400 kilometers is maybe not the most realistic range figure but if you calculate it now it would be small something like 360 kilometers so something less than 200 miles so maybe like 180 190 miles or something like that this one is then rather a realistic figure we drive on this car a little bit longer and see how that plays out and also give you a um, report later on but I think you know you always have to be realistic the same with the normal few figures um, overall the range is still enough that you can do the most things you want to do with this car that's I think still fine and it's not that you you know have this range anxiety all the time the big advantage again if you compare it to a Tesla here with the Audi e-tron is it's way more silent especially at higher speeds if you hear that already now of course the case is here with the electric vehicles when you drive faster you only have wind noise you have nothing from the engine and that on a subjective note could actually increase the possible wind noise you are hearing um, so you have to deduct that the effect basically but still if you then compare the Audi to the Tesla the Audi is way more silent here at the, at the higher speeds they just have more experience in noise insulation and all the engineering stuff um, that's by the way also one thing where the virtual mirrors are good for so there's less wind noise from this area then that's you know the only good thing I can I can see with this technology and I'm not finished with blaming them because now when the Sun is coming from the side you know it's like take your laptop outside at 12 o'clock and it's at a sunny day what can you see at your laptop screen it's exactly what you can see here now at this at this screen right there so you can see something but it's not good to see not at all yeah 
So very interesting driving impressions here with the Audi e-tron. Um, also here on just going straight. It's a great car to go straight. Super comfortable from seats, super silent. Plus enjoying the silent electric ride. That's really, really amazing. Consumption, oh, now went up over to 29 kilowatt hours or more kilometers. So yes, still the case when you drive a little bit faster, consumption goes up even more. Um, so the promised range figures are not really there right yet. Um, so I think we got some realistic stuff from you now, more realistic than the official figures, of course. And we'll keep you updated how it went on on the further drive. Hope you also enjoyed this extensive information right here. So now to our conclusion for today. Glad you joined us here for this full review and after I finish the conclusion, please also join the episode from Namibia where we're really <laughs> rocked it out with the e-tron on the sand surface. Well, exterior-wise, I think it's very well done. It's an elegant design and, I mean, it's basically an electric Q8, so to say, if you just look from the exterior. On the interior, we've got a great build quality and also a very elegant and clean design for sure. You can argue about if you need a central controller or if it's enough with the touchscreen while driving. You know, while driving it's quite often better not to use the touchscreen. So that's surely an argument. But overall the software is quite intuitive to use. However, one big flaw for a sustainable, supposed to be sustainable vehicle, of course, that they still set all the sails on animal skin. But with their recent concept car, Audi has shown that they want to change that now bit by bit at least, but they should have already done that here with this vehicle. From the room you have inside, it's also quite okay. In the rear trunk, well, it's not too high, but other than that, you can very well use this car, yes. You feel that it's not initially an all-electric platform, it's still this base from the MLB, which they are using for the A6, A7, A8, Q8, Q7 and so on. So that's a different, for example, to Tesla. Tesla builds the car from scratch as an electric vehicle. Here you have some points where you see they did not do that. That will follow later, a little bit later in the Volkswagen Corporation, first for the smaller cars, then for the bigger cars. But Audi wanted to put this car on the market now. You know, they are already quite late. The biggest fail of this car are those virtual mirrors. I think they're really dangerous. Please do not pick them if you buy this vehicle and also give the manufacturer a feedback. I have tested it now thoroughly and yes, if you get used to it, you will handle them a little bit better, that's for sure. But still, you always have to look a little bit further down and that distracts you. It takes more time to look up again and especially when it's sunny. It's like working on a laptop when it's sunny. It just doesn't work for me and I think it will also not work for you. And the second flaw is the range we were expecting. Figures as well 250 miles or 400 kilometers, Audi even promised more. But what we realistically found without super hammering it is more 300 something plus kilometers or 180, 190 miles. And that's still enough for most situations. But if you think about that, Realistic Tesla figures with a big battery is rather 400, 450 kilometers and definitely more than 200 miles. And that also like from Hyundai and Kia, they're smaller cars. They are also reaching those ranges now. So the range is indeed a little bit disappointing. The consumption was a little bit too high between 26 and even 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that's just too much. But now to the biggest strength of this vehicle, it drives so incredibly well. Due to this electric all-wheel drive and the basically free distribution, it feels like a, little, like a smaller car. It almost handles like a compact hatch or so. Uh, we also experienced that in our um, prototype ride in Namibia. This is so agile with the, uh, with the AWD. It's so silent on the one hand due to the great insulation so on, so you can drive also really fast. That's, by the way, also they have some, something ahead in Tesla, the production quality and also the noise insulation. So at higher speeds, it's still very, very silent. It's a great ride. The seats from the form are also so comfortable. And together with all of that, you have a super comfortable ride. But at the same time, it's 
very sporty although you have an air suspension which is again you know a balance between sportiness and comfort so um, I cannot stress too much how well it is to ride this car so um, that's actually the biggest strength and from driving I think it's at the, at the moment the best electric vehicle but concept wise we've um, explained to you some of those factors they are surely lacking some things yet and overall I think definitely one of the very interesting cars here at the moment of the, of the market. I think we could very well show you the pros and cons and I hope you enjoyed this Autogrifil episode with us.